Hi, you guys. Happy Friday. Um, look, I got a new phone. And so, you know what? That took care of all of our lighting problems. Go figure. Um, I'm going to make a, um, a poached turbo. And um, it's funny. I was just thinking about this. Um, I mean, a lot of people might see it and think it's turbot. And I'm sure that's probably like the way the British pronounce it. But I, it was, this is a very French dish. We're going to do turbo with sorrel and we're going to poach it in a quart bouillon and then the sauce finishes it. Okay. Um, I want you to really bear with me. We've had COVID in our house and I'm kind of like, this is the first day I'm really feeling good, which thank goodness. Cause I had to pick up for the cleaners today. Um, you came, they came to save us from ourselves. Um, so what we're going to do Turbo is sort of like, if you can't get it, it's actually kind of hard to get, which is why I was excited to find it today. Um, I was actually just talking with my, um, a, a good friend of mine who's French the other day about how hard it is to find Turbo in the United States. But they had some at the Fresh Market today. It's from Greenland. So we're gonna, we're gonna go with it. Um, what we're gonna do, I have this pan, this, you know, this has a, it has a glass lid so I can see what's going on. Um, and it's sort of big, right? It's big enough to fit the filet in. Um, I didn't get a very big one. I got the smallest one they had. Um, I actually don't even know how big it is. We'll check when I pull it out of the fridge. In fact, I'm leaving it in the fridge for just a minute because it's, again, it's been a week, you guys. My air conditioning was out for two weeks upstairs. And so the whole house was just like this sauna as we were suffering from the disease of the century. So anyway, um... We're going to, we'll pull the fish out later. But if you can't get turbo, is what I was saying, is um, you can use halibut. You know, my West Coast friends, halibut is is a good substitute, sort of, except it's turbo is sort of like a bigger sole. So if you can find like a good, you know, like a lemon sole or something like that, that works too. You just, you adjust it based on, on the, the thickness of the fish, right? Okay, so... <clears throat> I'm gonna, I have this pan here. And we're going to create a court bouillon first. And then we're gonna, we're gonna kind of sweat all of the veg in the, in the wine, okay, with the spices. And then um, add some water and poach the fish, okay? So I have two cups of white wine. Don't use anything super oaky or, or, um, thick or, um, you know, you know the drill, right? Something light. So I'm going to pour that in and I have about five sprigs of thyme from my garden. I'm wearing my Kenneth J. Lane bracelet. Here we are. This, um, I don't know if you guys have seen anything about what's going on. Speaking of the British today, the whatever jubilee it is, whatever jubilee it is. I don't know. Is it platinum? Is it diamond? Who knows? So then I have two, um, two kind of like, if you get the celery hearts, you know, the little pieces end up like this, do like two or three of those. Okay. And I've cut them in like two inch sections. We're going to throw those in. Um, and I also, because I just don't have any regular carrots, and you guys, today was the first time I'd been in the grocery store in two weeks, because my daughter had COVID first, and then me. Um, so I've been housebound. So I have, um, let's see, probably like, I'd say, you know, eight or 10 baby carrots, just cut them in half. So their lengths like, oh, <laughs> maybe I'll have to grab another one. Uh, um, about like that. Okay. And then I have a shallot. You can use an onion. This is like a kind of a regular size shallot. You can use an onion instead, but you know, this is one of those times when I just, you know, I, I don't want like, you know, I love my leftover half onions in the fridge, but I don't really want to deal with that. So I'm just going to cut this in like inch sections here. Okay. I'm just going to cut quarter it. My son is listening to something very loud in the other room. I don't really want to yell at him, but it's distracting. Phil, could you turn the volume down, please? Sure. Thank you. Okay, that's that. Now, up here on the salt shelf, under 
under the string. We have, we're gonna grab a couple of bay leaves, okay? And we're gonna grab about, mm, about a dozen peppercorns, like a small handful, right? A little more than a dozen, but we're gonna throw them out anyway. And I'm gonna turn this heat on. It's gonna start doing its thing, and I'm gonna put in about a teaspoon of salt, okay? And I'm going to cover this. And I want that to cook for about five minutes to kind of get it up there. So I have it on a really high burner. Um, put, this, put the string back. Um, so this is what's going to happen. You know, here we're, we're at six minutes because I've been chit-chattering. Um, I'm going to get this court bouillon up to the boil and it's going to sweat out and all of those wonderful flavors are kind of come in, um, go into the um, liquid. Then we're going to get the fish out. We're going to put it in this same liquid and I'm going to add some water, just enough to kind of barely cover the fish. Okay. And then when, um, and that's, and then the, the fish really only needs to cook in the court bouillon for about 10 minutes. Okay. And then after the fish is cooked, I'm going to, I'm going to take it off and we'll put it on a warm plate or platter or something like that. And I'm going to kind of put it up here against the oven. I have, um, potatoes, small, like tiny potatoes cut in half. And then you kind of, you know, put some olive oil and salt and pepper on them and, and toss them around and put them cut side down on a, on a cookie sheet. I have those in the oven at like 400. And so while those are cooking, the back of the stove is really, really warm. So I'm just gonna put the fish there because I don't want it to cook anymore, but I want it to stay warm, okay? And then while the fish is staying warm and the potatoes are finishing and I'm boiling water for peas, because um, not everything can be complicated. Sometimes we make frozen peas. Um, I'm going to drain the aromatics out of the liquid through like a, a little, you know, a little strainer kind of thing. And I'm gonna strain it into a very small pot with some cream, okay? And then we're gonna reduce that. And where does the sorrel come in? Remember we talked about the sorrel. This is my red veined sorrel. I don't have any French sorrel ready yet. Um, but this is, you know, it's a close relative. It's just, it'll turn your fingers red. So while kind of this is, coming up to the boil and it's almost there. I am going to um, get a better knife than this. I'm about to cut like a big pile of greens with that on too small a board too. So we'll get the right size board, the right size knife, avoid hurting ourselves. And I'm gonna start chopping this up. The swirl will go in last. You just kind of, at the very end, we're gonna swirl in this sorrel with some butter, because sorrel turns turns brown when it cooks. Um, so that was about 10 leaves of sorrel, okay? Now my, um, my court bouillon is starting to boil, and I have this lovely pile here. Now where do you get sorrel? Well, obviously, you know, I grow it, and it's, very happy in a good kind of shady, damp spot. I mean, not too shady, not like deep shade, but you know, a place where it'll get a few hours of sunshine a day, but not all day, not hot, not hot Virginia summer sun and the clay. We want like kind of, I have mine over at the, sort of on a fence line where it gets a little bit of shade from the fence, you know? Um, and it's very happy. It's happier than it was in my old place where it was getting blasted um, next to the driveway in the south. Okay. Now, I'm chopping this up really finely. It doesn't need to be a paste. It's not like pesto, but I do want it kind of fine. Okay, like that. Like you do parsley or something. Okay. Um. So that's that. I'm gonna grab the fish and the 
Oh, I have the cream. Now, this is another thing. I would normally use heavy cream, but as we know, I don't do lactose. So this is the only thing I can get lactose-free half and half. It's as much fat as I can. That's, that's as much fat as people who can't do lactose are allowed to have. I'm gonna get the fish out of the fridge. Okay, now I'm gonna fill up my little guy that had the wine in it with some water so that I know about, you know, as I said, we just wanna just cover it, but I don't know how much that is in different pans, you know? So I'm not gonna give you an amount. I have glasses here, I'll put those on my head. Um, I'm just gonna let that do its thing. No. The turbo, how much was it? Oh, it was like half a pound. I mean, you can, you should probably do a, more than that. It's, but it's just that it's me and the kids and they don't really love, like fish is not their favorite, you know? But I'll show you the fish. It's sort of like a flounder or a sorrel, I mean a sorrel, a sole. Um, and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna turn on my water for my peas because I just am. Because this everything's gonna start happening very fast. My potatoes are gonna be done in 10 minutes, which is about when the fish is gonna be done. So I have this lovely piece of fish here. I mean, as I say, it was not very big, but you can get more. Now my hand is wet, it's dirty, hold on. <laughs> I am gonna open the, pull this thing open. Um, I should show you the court bouillon, but my hands are dirty and this is hot. So I'm not going to, sorry. Um, so I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to add this water. Okay. And I'm actually going to grab a little thing and kind of move the aromatics out of the way so that the fish is not sitting up out of the water, if that makes sense. I should have done that before, but they just kind of want to be under there. Okay, now I'll show you this. Okay, it looks like that. Just a little bit, you know. And I'm going to turn the heat down. I had it really high to try to get it up to temperature. I'm gonna turn the heat down to kind of medium. And the timer is gonna go off in nine minutes. So we're good there. Um, and so that's that's the story. Okay, from here on out, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna babysit you because we talked about this. Um, but I am gonna look. There are two options you have here. You can either kind of sit and watch your cream reduce, or you can add um, after you drain everything. So, right, so when the fish is done, we're gonna take it out, we're gonna put it on a plate, we're gonna put it, put it where it's warm, right? If you have a warming drawer, you know, use it, whatever, a warm area. And then we're gonna strain out all the, all the liquid into like a small saucepan, okay? With a half a cup of cream, and we're gonna reduce it. Now, if you want to kind of speed the process up again a little bit, you can sprinkle a little bit of rice flour or um, cornstarch or something, but you really need to make sure it's integrated and that it doesn't get lumpy on you, okay? And then when the sauce is all reduced and it's really beautiful and everything's ready, your peas are done, your potatoes are done, we're gonna, we're gonna swirl in two tablespoons of unsalted butter and your little pile of sorrel and you're gonna taste it and see if it's nice and you're gonna serve your sauce separately because, why? Well, because sometimes little people don't like sauce. But that's okay. Um, anyway, have a wonderful weekend. I'm glad to see you again. Don't worry about me, we're doing fine. We're doing a lot better. I'll see you soon, bye.